Hi everyone, it's Paulie, and in this video, we'll be talking about building a custom gaming computer. For some, the age-old question, console or computer, has been down to a couple of factors, including price and complexity. Often people say that purchasing a console is nice and easy, however there are some updates and whatnot, but still considerably cheaper than what a custom PC can cost, but not always. Now Bryce and I have discussed this issue a couple of times in detail and you can watch our video, Consoles versus Computer, which is better for gaming, and you can find the link to that video in the description section below. So the Alpha One was constructed for a budget of under 1,000 Australian dollars. It's a small form factor computer with water cooling, and furthermore, it's a great starter computer if you want to expand later. Get value for money, and I mean, it's a computer. You can just do so much more. But if you are interested in building a custom gaming computer on a budget, there's a couple of things you need to consider and think of when you're selecting your components. Okay. Let's start with a clean bench. Now, if you've got an endless budget, then really any of this doesn't matter and you can stop watching the video now. But if you're like the majority of people that have a limited amount of money, then this is probably the part you wanna pay attention to. So when you're selecting components, you should have a couple of priorities and a couple of considerations to think of when you're doing it. Now, the first thing you wanna do is of course your budget. How much do you have to spend? That, of course, makes the all-important decisions on what components you select. So the first thing, which is an essential, unless you already have it, you will need an operating system. So Windows 7 or Windows 10 can cost anywhere between 100 to 150 Australian to US dollars. And it's the first thing you'll need. The second item on your list will be a motherboard. When selecting a motherboard, choose the highest spec motherboard available spend the extra money and get the best motherboard you can. This is the base, the foundation for your ongoing build for the next couple of years. This will ensure that you can then apply other high performance parts and really get the most value for money. If you shop around, you'll often find specials as I did with this one here, and the MSI B250M comes with a gaming mouse as well. Bonus. Next on the list is your storage. If you've got a bit more money to play with, an SSD is what you want to go for. It's going to be faster, it won't have as much storage, it will ensure that you get higher speed data trend. Now if you don't have as much money, that's okay. Just grab an optical hard drive. A 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch is satisfactory, SATA connections of course, and at a later stage you can upgrade to an SSD or get something bigger. Next on the list of components, your CPU. Now the CPU is important. But if you're on a budget, you may not have the money to get the latest i7K unclocked. For most, it can be the cost of your full build. So an i3, an i5 can be satisfactory. And listen, as mentioned, you can upgrade in two or three years time to an i7 reconditioned or new, and really it will extend the life of your existing computer. Next on the list is your GPU or graphics processing unit or graphics card. Once again, there's a huge range of options for people on a budget. If you have a bit more money, you may go for the latest 1070 or 1080 Titan. But once again, these can be the cost of your entire build. There are still great graphics cards that include the 1030. There are some AMD ones as well, which still provide 4K graphics. And while they may not look as cool or be as big as these larger ones, they still provide a decent image. And as mentioned, you can upgrade later. Okay, next on your list is your memory, AKA your RAM. The amount of RAM that you have should be considered when purchasing your custom gaming computer. You often wanna have a look at how much is required for the programs you wanna run, your operating system, and then try and double it. For most users, that's probably about eight to 16 megabytes, and that's sufficient. When choosing RAM, have a look how many slots your motherboard has to make sure it has enough. Don't forget, at a later stage, you can upgrade to 32 or 64 gigabytes when your budget enables you, once again, increasing the lifespan of your computer and really getting that value for money. Next on the list is power. 
When purchasing a power supply, you've got to consider what you'll be supplying your power to. So you've got your motherboard, and you've got your graphics card, and your CPU. You should try and match the amount of power with these components. Specs for these can often be found online. Also, when it comes to power supplies, if you have a bit more to spend, you may choose to get a semi-modular or fully modular power supply, which would enable you to change the color of your power supply cables. All right, next, we've got to talk about cooling. So when it comes to cooling, you have the option of air-cooled or water-cooled. A very popular option these days is, of course, these all-in-one water-cooled units, which are extremely cheap. They last for about two years, and they provide your CPU sufficiently. Uh, when it comes to a custom gaming rig, you may choose one of these. If you do, don't, don't forget to visually inspect it on a regular basis because you don't want this fluid leaking out. The lifespan of these, once again, is about two years. And next, we've got the case. So for many of you, your case will actually be the most important component. And while you want everything else to be highly specced, you will also want an awesome case. Now you can get some great value for money cases which really show off your build. This is the Thermal Take View 27 with this beautiful curved class glass window on the side here. And this starts from under $100 in Australia. Now the case, if you don't have any money left, just buy a cheap $30 or $40 case as I mentioned, you can upgrade that later. All these components can come with you into your next computer. When selecting your case, consider the form factor of your motherboard, and once again, consider the size of your graphics card. Ensure that the graphics card dimensions, all manufacturers list these details on their web pages. Do check them out. Lastly, you also have to consider, do you have peripherals such as mice, keyboards, headphones, and monitors? When it comes to monitors and peripherals, Yes, they do make an impact in your gaming experience. A mechanical mouse and professional gaming mouse do have shorter response times and last considerably longer, but of course carry a heftier price tag. You can pick up cheap mice or keyboards and monitors from any location online. This one I actually got from a secondhand store for $5. This monitor, it's 21 inch, and I've got my keyboard and mouse here for $5 each from JB Hi-Fi. Now there are some bonus tips I can give you here. The first bonus tip is there are a number of online sites which provide a great amount of information when it comes to selecting components. I'll put links for those web pages down below. One of them is PC Part Picker. It tells you whether parts are compatible, uh, if you have enough power with your power supply, if the dimensions may clash. It's a great online app and then it will tell you which supplies you can get the parts for cheapest. Just remember though you will need to pay for shipping with those so that's an additional cost. If you're picking up from your local supplier, yes, the parts may cost a bit more, but once again, you may not have to pay for shipping. In the next video, we'll be putting all these components into this case for RF Land 60, which is coming soon. Once again, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'm Paulie, and we'll see you next time.